Hi, yeah, this is Jean Spies from Inside Track Center. On the other side of the call is Bridget Miles. And hey, Bridget, how are you doing? Good, thanks, Sean. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So today we thought we would have a chat about something that we've touched on um, in actually numerous of our other podcasts or blogs or whatever you want to call this. But um, it kind of, it, it's a touchy subject in a sense of how far down the rabbit hole you really want to go. And uh, we thought that uh, we would try and just uh, scrape the surface today. Um, and the top three subject that we're talking about is technology and the way that technology has evolved and has changed the way that uh, sport and specifically cycling is uh, viewed, um, obviously for, through aerodynamics, um, coaching, equipment, wheels, tires, gearing, chains, uh, carbon, titanium, aluminium, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We can go on and on and on. But uh, yeah, we thought we'd touch on this. Um, I think uh, from my very first like eye-opening experience was definitely World Champs. I think for Bridge, it was probably the same thing. It was a bit weird as in, what is all of this stuff hanging around here? Um, and uh, through through that experience, obviously, we started asking the questions in T-Town. We started looking at it in a bit more detail. And uh, that led us to a whole different world where we started meeting people within that. Um, one of those being Dan Bigham from Watch Shop. Um, Dan is an aerodynamicist that has uh, taught me a whole world of difference within the sport. And I, something I really enjoy sharing with people is um, what I've learned from that. Um, obviously these brief conversations with Dan, but the brief conversations with coaches as well, with regards to the technology, as well as the different types of coaching that has come from it. Um, I think uh, from a management point of view, I guess, Bridge, there's a lot more, um, not so much a lot more involved, but a lot more, um detail that can come out of it especially from a manager's point of view as to how to get riders um faster and more competitive yeah i think um 2016 i agree was definitely i sort of i went into an industry that i wasn't ex exactly familiar with um but you know i knew bicycles and i've been in the cycling industry for quite a quite a number of years so I had an idea of sort of top of the range stuff and you sort of go into track cycling and you know we went in with a nice chevelo t3 and um some nine nice little uh, chain blades and uh, wheels that we thought were great and um with tires that we thought were great which ended up not being so great and uh <laughs> but you know, that experience sort of looked, shaped what we, what we did going forward. And I did start having conversations more, more in, so in terms of from T-Town and um, sort of going from there. And then actually the way we sort of met Dan Begum was we were sitting next to the team at the time, which were the actually were called KGF. And they were pretty much a self-funded track UCI trade team. And yeah, they were just racing to just show that you could be fast and good. And um, we started chatting with them then. And I think, yeah, we we got to know them pretty well. Uh, Jean spent a little bit of time in Derby with them. And then we did some error testing with Dan. And that just opened our eyes massively, I think. Uh, you know, we were privileged to actually both be there for the error testing. I don't think Jean's done that many 1K efforts and I don't know how long. <laughs> um but yeah it was it was all very scientific based yeah sorry to, be, to jump in there we did 16 kilo efforts in the space of two hours um as Britt said the tires for example we thought were good i had sonda glasses on i think and they tested 45 watts more than what a pista speed tested i mean that's just tires um, you can look at clothing. I know there's speculations of clothing that's coming out for the Olympics where you're looking at over 100 watts saving just on a piece of material. Um, it's ridiculous. And uh, I think that's the amazingness of how, how the sport's developed and how the sport keeps developing. You know, um, Bridget and I have said in previous, well, not so much previous blogs, but in conversations that this is the Formula One of cycling. And um, I still believe that, you know, 
yes, we look at the Tour de France and we look at all these things and you kind of watch these road riders with these fancy pieces of equipment and I kind of laugh at it because it, it's not quite the case. Um, a good example of that was the Giro last year when Felipe Pagana had a 62 train blade on his tantra bike and the whole social media and everyone went berserk about it and the track riders were going but we've had it on our bikes for the last like six years. I don't know what the big deal is. Um, so yeah, and I know a lot of the clothing development, a lot of bike development, um, everything actually comes from the track because it's a controlled environment. Um, the guys test it there first and then move it across to the road. So yeah, if you're already actually get on the track and come and test your equipment here before before you go to the road. Um, I think from a coach's or coaching perspective, it's the same, exactly the same thing. Things are tested on the track and you can actually control the environment and therefore the effectiveness of that training goes a lot further um, and a lot more effective. So it's just a case of continuing the the trend of what is bigger, what is better, what is faster. Um, we haven't reached the ceiling by any means as to what technology does, what the training does. Um, you know, yes, you're looking at a 9.1 200 meter uh, world record, and I don't know. I'm I'm assuming we're going to go under nine seconds at Olympics. Um, I'm assuming that oh. uh, I'm assuming that the team pursuit is going to go under 440. Uh, sorry, 340, um, which is absolutely stupid speed. Um, just actually physically stand there on the side of the track and watch those speeds, you you just get goosebumps. Um, yeah. But yeah, it all comes down to the technology and the change in how people view the limitations of what we have and what we are doing. Um, and the beauty of this level of the sport is. Um, the fact that it keeps those boundaries keep getting pushed every single day. Yeah, I think the the boundaries being pushed is because most of the riders um, that sit at the top level of sport, and I think it wouldn't just be riders, I think it's in, probably across most sporting disciplines. You know, they, everybody sits on a very, very similar level. I don't think the training strategies and training plans are really that much different that the coaches use, because technically all the coaches that we know have all coached at different countries. So they all sort of know each other. Um, and uh, I think that like, obviously there is different coaches and different coaching techniques, of course, but I think a lot of the differences that comes down to 0 0.02 seconds comes in with equipment or clothing or a new chain that's got more wax and less resistance or changing the dynamics of the front chain ring and the, and the back sprocket. And I think um, that's, that's where at the moment, I think that's where you win or lose. And it's, it's absolutely insane. I mean, you could still be the best rider all round and without any issues there, but the definite, when it comes down to the final details, you, you're going to try your best to make every little bit count and then just hope for a really lucky day. Uh, I think that's what happens in most of these cases. I mean, you're looking at the Kieran riders, so I'll use sprinting because obviously that's that's the, the discipline we're in. I mean, you look at the Kieran riders and I mean, there's so little difference between these guys and John's included in that. And it just comes down to the luck of the day. But if you know you've got everything else in your favor, I think as an athlete, I mean, you can attribute to this, John. Mentally, you're like, okay, well, what's all that's left is me. You know, we're I'm on an even playing ground and all that's left is me to do it. And I think that makes a difference as well. Yeah, I think definitely at this level, that makes a massive difference, obviously. At a lower level, um, I think there's less importance of it. Obviously, training-wise, is far more important. Getting to that next level, being able to push 22, 23, 24 watts per kilo, that's that's a bigger fundamental at a lower level that needs to be obtained. But once you get to a World Cup level, for sure, getting on an even playing field with the techno technology has a massive, massive impact, obviously, on confidence of racing, the ability of racing, and, of course, the final performance. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, as I said to Bridge, we, we want to try and keep this one short because otherwise we're going to keep going. So we're going to cap it off there for today. Um, thanks again for watching us and watching our blog. For those of you that have questions, please send us an email or drop us a link in so on social media. Um, if you've got any topics you'd like us to, to chat about, please don't hesitate to give us, um, give us some feedback on that. And then, um, yeah, we still have our, we've got our website going. It's insidetrack.weebly.com. 
Um, there is obviously our past, past podcasts, past video vlogs up there. Um, also a click and donate page there. Um, obviously everybody's um, generosity is greatly appreciated. We are almost at the Olympics, but we need some help for the final push. So if there's any generosity out there, we would greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so Wonderful. much. We will see you now. Thank you, Bridge. Thanks, John. Thanks, guys. See you again. Bye.